we so we're thinking about collaborating so the first step in collaborating really is um sparking off generating conversations with people so when you have ideas in research when you're planning projects you want to have conversations and through github the way you do that is by using issues i just realized i haven't um do that so it's a bit bigger so you you actually have issues so these are messages it's ideas so you might be you might look on someone's repository so you can you can start issues on anyone's repository you don't have to fork anything but you can do this um, on anyone's repository because what what issues are used for so if you're working on software projects often issues are created to report bugs in the code or errors that are happening on websites or something like that but also they used to propose new ideas. Um, you can use them to save notes and also invite discussions. So I've been using issues on uh, our Fair Fightlift project. Like when Celine joined our project, I set up an issue which was um, to onboard her into the project. So it's just, I made a checklist on the issue that we could go through with the different steps that we wanted to um, get done while she was onboarding onto the project. So it's really developing a conversation, but you might have a new idea you might want to have a conversation with other collaborators within that that group and it starts the conversation going because everybody can see the issue and you can describe what you're trying to trying to do um trying to get started so at the start so issues is at the top next to the pull request button you again can put a title and then you can put a description of the work that um you are proposing the idea you're proposing so it could be like when in the Turing way project we do lots of talks so often we start an issue um for example um open science fair conference is coming up um does anyone want to do a talk with me about the Turing way or run a workshop on this and so we have a little conversation about it and um and then we might come up with a few people that can start working on that particular um aspect it doesn't always have to go into um, working in in uh, the GitHub repository because that example we would we would not be working on uh, the GitHub repository probably to make the slides and things like that for the talk. But we probably would then archive that um, in a pull request and link it to the issue because the issue creates a number for the issue, so that's useful for linking to the work that you're doing in a particular pull request and branch um so these are really good for working in asynchronous teams because you can obviously add your your comments your links whatever you're putting in the issue um whenever you want to and it will it will say that you've done it because it's come from your particular account um so um yeah so issues are for proposing ideas possible changes um and really this is done before you start working so i tend to work uh, on an issue first and gather some people to work with me on something and then I will I will create a branch within the repository and then at some stage I will start a pull request so sometimes that happens at the beginning of your work on the branch if you're working with lots of people adding to that particular branch it could be at the end of the work as well and it depends which um, works for you best and how collaboratively you are working on that particular um change that you're making uh, whatever you're doing in that particular branch yeah so uh, in issues um anyone really can see what you're doing um because you've got to remember that if you've got a public github repository everybody actually can look at what you're doing everything on it so issues it's the same thing everybody can see it um whereas um actually responding to uh, pull requests and making them happen can only actually be done by certain people that have um the um the access the right access or our admins of the actual repository or maintainers actually that's the other thing of repositories um i'm not going to go into that because that's too much right so let's very quickly go through branches so um it's very similar to what you've just done with forking so the only difference is that you are starting in the main repository okay you're not pressing that fork button we don't need that anymore okay so once the repository has been set up so imagine we've just set up this training repository we were using um what we would do is um the first thing really is that 
if I wanted all of you to work on that repository, I would need to know your GitHub name, your GitHub usernames, and I would add you as collaborators into that repository. And that would give you access to actually start making changes on the actual repository. OK, it does depend on what access you are given. So a lot of the time you can't because um, if it's your own repository, I'm sure, you know, you can just add changes in to the main repository. Uh, you don't have to think about branches, pull requests, all of that stuff. OK, you don't have to think about that. But um, if you're trying to work collaboratively, you should set up your repository so that everybody cannot make changes onto the main repository because you want people to create branches, you want people to ask for someone to review the work, and you, you are trying to create a collaborative workflow so that people are actually having conversations about the work, they're reviewing each other's work, and then it is being put into the main repository. So you can actually enable that um, collaboration by restricting access to the repository. And that sounds quite aggressive as well, but actually it enables this collaboration to happen because it has to happen. Otherwise, people cannot merge work into the repository. So when you if the people you want to work on the repository that you have created, you've got to add them in as collaborators straight away. So that's the, the sort of main thing to do once you've made your um, your repository and they will get sent an invite. So they don't have to accept that. They will actually get sent an email that invites them to um, have access to the repository. So they will obviously click yes if they want to do that or, or they won't accept it. And you'll be able to see that. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, we've already, we've made a, just made a pull request. So you've done this. So once you have made your branch, so we're gonna use this clicky uh, gray button here. And um, once you've clicked it, you can actually name your branch. So you can directly start making edits. So without creating this new branch, but it gives your branch a very weird name, like uh, Ecarine Patch 1 or something like that. Now that's okay, but I, I find, I like to give my branches a name that I understand what is going on in the branch. So I always start my work by creating a branch from the main repository using that gray button. And I give it a name. So this one says adding license, and I just type that in and then I click create. And then what will happen is I will be able to go into the branch from that gray button. Um, and it will here it will change to two branches. So it shows that I've created this new branch. And I do that because I, I if I've got like eCareen patch one, eCareen patch two, patch three, well, what am, I, what am I doing in each of these branches? And actually nobody else knows what I'm doing in each of those branches as well. They don't understand that. So I like to name the branches first before I start to do anything in the branches, because I think that it's, it's better, it's more accessible for people to work with you if they know what you're, what you're doing in each of the branches. Um, and the idea really is that each branch you create is a separate bit of work that you're doing. So maybe you're adding in, uh, you're creating a website, you're adding in files for uh, a data paper, you're adding in... Um, uh, I don't know your metadata for a particular file, a uh, particular project or something like that. So, um, so giving it a particular name that is associated with the work helps people to understand what's going on in that branch. And really it helps people to collaborate with you. Um, so pull requests we've already gone over. Um, so that's when you finished your work, you want to bring it back into the main branch. And then merging is when someone has approved it and they're saying, yes, that works great. So we're going to put that into the main repository. Um, so, um, so why would you work in a branch um, instead of working in the main? So uh, there are, so even in your own repository, when it's only you that is working on that repository, there are a lot of positives to working in branches rather than adding into the main repository. So one thing is that um, you've got to remember that everybody can see your repositories if they're public. So the main repository is what people see when they come to your GitHub repository. So if they're seeing a half finished bit of work, so say you've got, you put your readme up there, but it's only, it's only half edited and it's got loads of spelling mistakes in it, but you've just added that all into the main repository. If someone comes to that, they're going to be like, oh, that's, that's, 
looks like there's loads of mistakes in there. Why is that? Why is that like that? Whereas if you were actually making those edits in a branch, you're removing it in a sense from view from people. People can actually still see it if they click in your branches, but it's not the first thing that they would see. So you want to keep your main repository, although GitHub repositories are a work in progress always because they are working. They're working repositories. They're not really finished repositories. It's sort of working things. It is best to work in a branch so that all of your finished work is in the main repository and your work in progress bits are in branches. So it's kind of like you've got work in progress to one side that you're working on, but your main repository is all your finished work that you're happy for someone to see. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be totally finished, but it's what you're happy, you know, you've agreed in your team, you're happy that's the bit of work that can go into the main repository. Um, so as I've said here, the branch is your work in progress. It allows um, other team members to work on it um, because actually sometimes not everyone has access to working directly in the main repository. So um, it's best to go into the branch for working collaboratively with other people and adding, being, letting people edit and review the work that you're working on. The other reason also, if your repository is enabled as a website, everything in the main repository shows directly onto your website. So if you're doing changes in the main repository, those changes, you know, half finished changes and things, they might show up on your website. So if you're working in a branch to put new pages in, it's much better to finish those off in the branch, merge them in when they're ready, and then they'll appear on the website. So it's kind of like good working practice to start branches and work on those on, on things that you are work in progress things. 